And we're back. I am Chris. I am Mark. And together we have formed the Incredible Hoax, coming to you from the Man Cave. Affectionately, Ink Hoax. <laughs> ink Hoax. Not with a K. That'd be weird, like we're some sort of pissed off octopus or squid. Yeah, we're not that. No, we're like Ink, no. like, in, or like Incredible incorporated. or Incorporated. Yeah. <clears throat> capitalists or capitalistic. Today's fun because we get to do our first ever Hall of Shame Awards. For election any, edition. Election. We've never done a Hall of Shame, although we've talked about things that anger us all the time. But now we're doing, like, we're specifically <laughs> calling out individuals to shame them. Election edition. Election edition, yes. And talking about specific, specifically, specifically, the primaries of the 2016 presidential race. Mm-hmm. All right. So who, who tops your, I only got two names that I really want to make fun of. Well, they're just asking to be made fun of. Three categories. First up, mm -hmm. I officially uh, call this category "My Bad, Your Bad." CNN gets this award right before the Iowa caucus. They clearly are speculating on candidate Ben Carson mm -hmm. as to whether he's dropping out of the race and going home to Florida, blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. And then they spent the next two weeks denying that that speculation ever took place. So, my bad, your bad. No, 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 we didn't say that. So, shame on you, shame CNN. Shame on you. Own it. On the you Iowa did it. caucus. You Own it, CNN. Well, staying with this theme, my, my, my uh, I don't really know if I'm shaming people. I just want to make fun of some people. Yeah, like, go, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hey, like, your first uh, well, shameful candidate. Ben Carson. All right, I'm sure he's a decent man. I'm sure he is an amazing surgeon. But I, I, okay, first off, when it comes to elections, to me it's more about feel. Mm. Like, it's all about how that, that candidate makes me feel. Uh, does that burn me sometimes? Yes, but so far in my voting life, I've, I've sort of, I feel like this is the best guy. It's a feel. Ben Carson gives me this creepy feeling and vibe, and it's only been supported with facts. <laughs> <laughs> like okay like I'm a, I am a Christian let's put it out there but I do think there is like a, I, I don't like the whole evangelicalism in politics thing I mean they go to church four times a week for all I care but there's a way and there's a, a milk toastness that some people bring to it mm. you know what I'm talking about that the church summer camp leader yeah. mentality so, and, and so tone not a fan of the fundamentalist but it's vibe. It, well, no, not the fun of that. But plus, it's just the tone and the. There's kind of a yeah. If you if you don't know if you haven't been there, you, it's hard to say. But any of you guys ever been to a church summer camp and then one of the guys give you this weird mousy milk toast vibe? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Everything's very vanilla. And, yeah. Well, that's what Ben Carson always gave me. He just and then you see the online. Google it. Google uh, Ben Carson and Jesus and see the picture, the painting that he had made with Jesus at his shoulder. It's like a Sears mm. Portrait Studio type pose. Yeah, it's just creepy. Ben Carson creeps me out. I'm going to say it. Ben Carson creeped me out. Okay, good segue. Our next award. Yeah. Creepiest anchor. And the Hall of Shame. Lots of Jews from, unfortunately. Creepiest anchor. I would have to say MSNBC. Ooh. I gotta say, Chris Matthews. He got caught on a hot mic. A hot mic. Going on and on about Mrs. Donald J. Trump, uh, also known as Melania Trump. Yeah. Uh, how much he enjoys Watching. her walking down the yeah. runway and he'd watch that runway show google kind of creepy so yeah, chris matthews there. let's see those hands keep them on the top of the desk where we can see them well he's also the guy that said weird feelings go up his leg when barack obama talks felt a thrill up his leg with the so, so yeah he's kind of been creepy as a running theme here creepy tonight. yeah my okay. next my next creepy candidate would go to lindsey graham now i don't know i have a lot i don't have a lot of facts and data to give you about lindsey graham uh but Let's just say that he gives me the same vibe as a former Penn State football coach would have gave me. And I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, if, if it came out later that he patrolled neighborhoods in an ice cream van, I wouldn't be surprised. That's just the vibe. I, I damn sure don't want him leading any 
I don't want him as commander in chief of anything. So, at the very minimum, you are accusing him of being effeminate. At, that, the, at the very least, that would be the highest road I could take at this point. <laughs> Let's just say Lindsey Graham gives me. Ben Carson gave me a weird religious creepy vibe. Lindsey Graham gives me a got to check and see if there's a perv map listing for somebody in my neighborhood type vibe. Are there any predators in my neighborhood? Let me do a quick neighborhood check on the internet. <laughs> oh, hey, there's Lindsey Graham. <laughs> Bye. Don't, I can't vote for you. Well, after Dennis Hassert, we're all just suspicious yes. of every last one of them now. Um... <laughs> <laughs> this is the most. Woo. This is the most politically correct show I think we've ever done. Yeah. Hey, yeah, that's true. Uh, to wrap my, it up, my last one. Last one is moderating ingenuity. Hall of Shame has to go to Fox News for Chris Wallace. Yeah, he goes to ask Trump a question, and this is this is a debate from about two months ago now. Yeah, he asks uh, Trump a question, and it's a question. That involved an attack uh -huh. on Cruz. Mentions the senator by name. Trump answers the question. He's done. Cruz, like, well, I'd like to respond. Chris Wallace, no, no, no. Trump never said your name. Uh. And Wallace, is like, wait a minute. Or excuse me, Cruz is like, wait a minute, but you, you said my name in the question. I don't get to respond to that. And he's like, no. Oh wow! That's a that's a, that's a very tricky thing. Is like doing an attack on a candidate that's running from a moderator, hey. involving their name and not letting the like the one guy that's like was Bad under the criticism form. can't then respond to it. It was a shameful moment. That, like, that was one it, of the debates. That was in the debates. Yeah, I, I think because I they had this. they had a famous or infamous yeah. exchange, and Chris Wallace would not let him. Like no, I'm I'm I'm, I'm well, going on. I'm moving on. I'm like, dude, you did ask a question. D don't you think the guy that got critiqued yeah, should wrong. be able to? That's I don't wrong. care if you're Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, yeah. Whig party. You don't. That was kind of shameful. Well, I, we we were wrong. Long. Yes. I will end it with this. Next time we have we go through this when there's when there's too many candidates, you you just got to take the top five. Yeah. And, and put them on stage, and that's it. If you're not in the top five, yeah. then sorry. But th this stuff of having 12 guys up there trying to do a debate is senseless and pointless. I, I, that was embarrassing. I don't want to hear, like, second-tier debate ever again. No. That's, it's, they should take the top five at most. Five is, is probably pushing it even. America does not benefit be from having multiple tiers of right. debate. So... Next, next, next cycle. So they're all guilty. They all get a hollow shame on that one. Shame on everybody. No shame more on everybody. Two tier. No. The only one who gets out of this clean is Heather Now to Fox News. Heather Now to Fox News. You are a saint. Give your saint. Hey, shout out to Anna Coyman. The you two are yes. saints. God bless you. And with that. Oh, I gotta get to that libertarian uh, debate. Be right back. Yeah. <laughs>